Now, a showdown is looming between the financial services providers and the financial services board. Service providers are accusing the board of trampling on their rights. As a result, they've launched a petition calling for an oversight mechanism to be introduced to ensure that individual rights of financial service providers are respected. Chris Van Avalt is representing the financial service providers under Risk SA and is also director at ISS Compliance. Thanks so much for joining us, Chris, this morning. morning. What, what's at the heart of this dispute is something that is a statutory law or it's a legislation, which is the Financial Advisory and Intermediary Services Act of 2002. What are the issues? Cindy, that is correct. Before I give you my answer, please allow me to correct an, an error in perception which has arisen in consequence of us launching the petition. Mm. And that is that people think we have drawn battle lines with the Financial Services Board. Um, nothing could be further from the truth. Um, secondly, uh, an impression is created that by launching the petition, we don't endorse the objectives of the Act, which overarchingly um, are uh, aimed at consumer protection. Which is fine, but yes. the point is, you're not necessarily, uh, uh, what's the word, uh, seeing eye to eye, as it were. There are certain areas of dissatisfaction. So which are those? Absolutely. There are areas of dissatisfaction. The financial services providers uh, whom I represent uh, today all feel that excessive force is being applied in keeping the uh, certain provisions of the Act in place. Now, when one measures the sustainability of a piece of legislation, different uh, criteria apply um, uh, than what one would apply to a company. Companies, we look at whether they adopt a stakeholder approach and how they report in terms of the bottom line. When you measure sustainability of regulation, one has to look, amongst other things, because there's a lack of profit motive, you have to look at the degree of force that is required to keep that piece of legislation in place. And in case of the Phase Act, there is a vast degree of force necessary to keep it in place. So in other words, you, you're limited in terms of the commission that you may ask from a client, especially if they're going to purchase products like life insurance and that kind of thing, or stocks. Uh, and over and above that, there's a number of service, financial service providers whose application had been declined, be they uh, uh, undertakers or funeral parlors and that. Is, are, are those some of the issues? Well, those aren't really some of the issues because the commission have always been regulated not by the Phase Act, but certainly by the Long-Term Insurance Act and the Short-Term Insurance Act and, and, and the various other acts which regulate the conduct of, of the um, product providers. Um, I also am not representing those people who have unsuccessfully applied for licensing. Mm. The, the, the issue here is the discomfort that is currently being felt by people who are law-abiding um, financial advisors who do their utmost to comply, but they, felt, they feel that the requirements for them to comply are just becoming completely overwhelming and they feel totally and utterly swamped. So the implementation of the Act is a little bit uh, uh, lopsided and leaning more towards consumer protection as what it does the protection of financial services providers. What are some of the fundamental rights that you feel you're entitled to or that you feel are being infringed on? Right. And fundamental principle in law is that for every right that you gain, you have a concurrent obligation. The Act seems to ignore the, that principle. Um, to give you one or two examples, um, if uh, currently judgment is being given in the, in the case of uh, Jeff Levenstein, the ex-CEO of Regal Bank, it has taken almost nine years for that case to come to court, and he has been convicted of four charges of fraud. In terms of the Phase Act, if a representative of a financial services provider conducts what could essentially be a misdemeanor, the, the law obliges the financial services provider to immediately debar that representative. There is no automatic right of appeal, and that person is now denied an opportunity to earn a living for the next 12 months where after he, can only, he or she can only apply again. But how prevalent is the non-compliance to, to the Services Act? In, in my opinion, in my assessment, it is not very prevalent. Um, the, the, but the, wh what goes with it is the fear and the alienation of the financial advisors to the extent that they are now beginning to feel um, lose faith in the institution of the Financial Services Board and to me that is the major concern because faith in institutions is the hallmark of a civilized society and if that is lost steps need to be taken urgently to restore that faith. All right, while we agree that uh, relations are not necessarily severed between the service providers and the financial services board, but we also uh, agree that there are certain tensions or areas that need to be addressed to try and, you know, uh, reach a certain level right. of harmony. Have you engaged uh, with the board? Yes, we have, and that's part of the reason that we've decided to launch the petition, because we found the existing communication mechanisms wholly inadequate. 
meetings with the Financial Services Board very often don't achieve the desired result. Um, communications to the Financial Services Board um, often don't get answered. There's a, a, an inherent appeals process if one does not agree, but that appeals process is done by the Financial Services Board itself, and it's not an, a, an effective uh, a, a resolution mechanism either because it takes a very long time and mm. is also exceptionally expensive. But, I mean, beyond the petition, what do you do? I mean, something, an act has been promulgated, and there's going to be another process, consultation back and yes. forth before uh, any changes yeah. are made. In terms of civil law, beyond the petition, if the powers that be decide not to act on it, we have to wait for the next election. All righty. Thanks so much, uh, Chris. We, we wish you all the success. Thanks so much. We're speaking to Chris van der Waal from Risk SA, speaking about the grievances regarding the financial services providers with the Financial Services Board. If you have any comments on that discussion, send it to sunrise at etv.co.za. Up next, your financial indicator.